All right, welcome back to the ENCA Money Desk now. My colleague Devin Morgan is with us. Afternoon to you, Devin. I see the retail giant Edcon set for a business rescue. Yes, you're quite right. Until recently, Edcon was South Africa's largest clothing retailer to mellow. Those big Edgars and Jet brands fall under Edcon. Let's get straight into it. Joining us via Skype is Edcon CEO Grant Patterson. Mr. Patterson, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Presumably the board's final decision to go the business rescue route was the realization or inability to pay creditors for March and April month ends. Yes, you know, uh, I think everyone knows that Edcon has been weak uh, and has been trying its best to recover its position in the market. And so we went into this crisis weak uh, and uh, we lost 2 billion rand in turnover over the six weeks since March 15th. And so we can't pay our suppliers at the end of April and March. The South African company that's quite clear on the matter is at this point you must either file for business risk or liquidation and we chose the business first to root. Certainly wasn't uh, a, a situation that you thought would have got to this stage uh, some months back, but what happens with salaries now of those thousands of staff, direct staff members uh, at the end of this month? So we paid full salaries at the end of March. At, at the end of April, we're going to need uh, the assistance of the UIF to pay salaries, so we will probably uh, pay a portion, as we have done this morning, of their salaries, and then when the UIF claim comes through, we'll um, make them up to 100% of their salaries. And uh, you know, are you confident that uh, yeah, the UIF has had problems? We've seen those challenges. Uh, does that scare you a little bit in terms of how proceedings will take place on that front? Not really. I, I, I mean, I, I think I understand the administration challenge of the UIF that went from a uh, one level of claims to another level of claims. We'll just work with them to resolve the administration of, um, backlogs uh, and that uh, I full confidence in, in time that they will pay out the claim and then we'll be able to pay the employees. Grant, b before this COVID-19 related lockdown, I mean, do you think there was still hope that this could survive? You, you got 2.7 billion rand in help from the PIC, landlords and creditors. Again, is it fair to say that had COVID-19 not pitched up, that assistance would have laid the ground, if you like, for an Edcon survival? I think that's absolutely without question is that without COVID-19, Edcon would not be in business rescue today. I mean, that's, that's an absolute fact. I think what is true and needs to be acknowledged, though, is it was Edcon was still on the way to recovery, and so it wasn't necessarily guaranteed it would recover. Uh, we certainly felt confident we could get through to March next year, um, but COVID-19 has certainly brought an end to those visions. And you put a number of about 2 billion rand in losses there. But let's talk about those non-core brands. You had Edgar's Active, you had legit so-called non-core brands. It, it didn't survive under the Edcon banner. They were sold. There's a big likelihood that Edgar's and Jet could also be sold under this process. Any chance of that not happening, Grant? Um, I, I don't know. That's not under my control. I think, I think you're right there in saying... You know, part of fixing Edcon was to to put its good retail assets, such as Edgar's Active and CNA and Legit, in other owners' hands, uh, uh, companies that had a stronger balance sheet and, and had a better chance of, of investing in those businesses. So that's been done, and certainly that may be one of the solutions going forward for Edgar's and Jet. So whilst Edcon's survival, I think, is probably um, you know under question now, it's not necessarily true that Edgar's and Jet went well. Well, Edgar's and Jed does open on Friday, but you'll only be able to sell winter clothes. How far can this reopening, if you like, on Friday uh, lead to a possible survival of those brands? Yeah, so the process here would be um, to uh, have the business risk practitioner appointed. As you say, we will open all of our stores or nearly all of our stores on Friday. Uh, we want to be very careful to make sure we only open stores where we've got the first protection equipment in place and the, and the uh, hygiene processes in place. Um, but we will open that. I mean, we start generating some cash under business rescue, and the company could survive for weeks, maybe months in that state. And that's the reason we chose business rescue, to give us that time to uh, explore other solutions that may be possible.
And in that time frame, Grant, you have, uh, I mean, you made uh, an emotional address to creditors last month when you said that they will not be paid. Can we quantify the outstanding amount? And in that time period, what exactly happens to them? Yeah, so, so now that we're in business rescue, they become part of the process. Uh, each of those suppliers will uh, be invited, will be communicated shortly by the business risk practitioner, invited to creditors meeting. And together with other creditors, they'll actually decide the future of Econ. Uh, and th those decisions will, in, will determine how much of their claim upon EDCON that was unpaid gets paid. Uh, I would estimate that at the moment, you know, there's probably unpaid liabilities or a similar number to that $2 billion rand. Yeah. And just finally, Grant, what are you telling your staff this afternoon about, uh, about their future? Well, we've communicated first to our staff, as we always try and do before we uh, do media releases. So I, I shared with them a, a reasonably lengthy letter which explained all the decisions we had made and the impact on them. Um, uh, I've asked them to focus on helping us open the business on Friday um, and, uh, and explain to them how important that is to give us the time to try find a solution. So uh, it's a big and emotional uh, communication, and I'm sure uh, many of them are not feeling good at the moment. Um, and. Uh, uh, we'll work with them on dealing with what issues we can help them with, but mostly try and get them focused on getting back into the stores and opening them on Friday. All right, Ed Conceal, Grant Patterson, thanks very much indeed for talking to us.